Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Welcome back to another Schema Scalper video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about risk and the important factors that the important factors to follow for passing funded accounts. I got this question from Legendary Headshotter 4564. Bro, what, what should be the risk management to follow for funded accounts? And what is the important factors to follow for funded accounts? Okay. And we're going to break it down as it's... When I first read it, I thought it was one question. But as I saw again, there's actually two questions that are separate. So, let's get into it. I'm going to close that tab. What is risk? A risk is the amount you are willing to lose on a trade. That's all that it is. So we've got um, different types of risk. Well, this is how I look at risk. We've got account risk, trade risk, and position risk. Account risk is how much of the account I'm willing to lose for that day. That's what I look at as my account risk. Trade risk is how much I'm willing to lose on a trading idea, which means if I take a position in GU, I can now take that same position in EU, and that risk will be combined and I have a maximum for that and position risk is how much I'll take on any position so that means if I'm taking at any trade any trade position what's the amount of risk I'm willing to take and this risk the position risk is always smaller than the trade risk and your trade risk is always smaller than your account risk you never want to inverse this you can't have a higher position risk than you are willing to lose in your account. You're not going to sleep at night. It's not going to be fun. Okay. With that being said, I'm going to read the question again. What should be the risk management to follow for funded accounts? Simple. Do not risk more than 1%. That's the easiest rule. Do not risk more than 1%. And now we'll get into the second part, which actually links to this first part. And I'll show you the link now. Um, what is the important factors to follow for passing a funded account? Number one, ooh, having an edge. An edge means like a positive return. That's what an edge is. So if you've back tested or you forward tested your strategy, um, as long as there is a, a forward, a positive return, that's your edge. And understanding your edge is how you make money. And understanding your edge and linking it to your risk management is how you make good amounts of money without having sleepless nights. So I have an edge. Now, the edge doesn't have to be, oh, I need 90% accuracy. No. That's why I put this down here below. So... 50% accuracy with a 1 to 2 risk to reward. That's, I'd say, achievable. And this is the formula for two weeks. So you're taking essentially 10 trades with 5 winning and 5 losing, which is a 50% accuracy. And this would be over a two week span. So every day you're trading uh, for two weeks, you're taking 5 wins, 5 losses. Your wins are double your losses. Oh, damn. My bad. This is actually wrong. That's 5%, not 75%. After two weeks, you'll have 5%. That's on a 1 to 2 risk to reward at 50% accuracy. So you've got 10 minus your 5, which is 5%. That's simple enough. And with these funded challenges, the next one, the next most important thing, allow time to work for you. That's the second most important thing. You see this formula here? This is after two weeks, 50% accuracy of the one to two risk reward. Super achievable. You can do this 100% um, 
if you're watching this video i'm sure you can do it go back to my other videos and i'll and watch those videos over and just see like one to two this road is actually really achievable with accuracy it's it's almost almost laughable it's like it's so easy just go look at my other videos you'll enter close to the high take one to two close your trade be upon your business live your life you'll be gucci um then also having an edge you need to understand that there are times when there are winning streaks and there are times when there are losing streaks this is why data and backtesting is important if you don't backtest and you don't have data about your your edge and your strategy you're going to find yourself in a losing streak and not um pushing like pulling back risk you're going to have the same amount of risk and you're going to keep losing and losing and chipping away at your account so that by the time your winners actually come through it's going to be really really difficult to capitalize on your winners and actually push into them which is my third point i'll go to the second point and then it's allowed time to work for you you see this formula that's after two weeks of trading you'll be up five percent which means using the same math and the same logic after one month of trading you'll pass your phase one and after one and a half months of trading so six weeks of trading if you had to start this monday six weeks into the future you could expect yourself to have your funded account or your phase three account right this is just based on my understanding and my knowledge i'm not saying you should go and do this um you doing everything at your own advice at your own risk and this is not financial advice at all it's just for educational purposes um allow time to work for you all these prop firms that are coming out now have unlimited trading days do not be in a hurry that's the thing do not be in a hurry because more prop firm accounts are lost during phase one than any other phase i think the stat was like 94 percent of prop firm accounts are lost during phase one which means and okay and to dive deeper into that i think it was like 60 percent of those are hitting daily loss limits so it's if that person had to just wait it out and trade small small chip chip away chip away one percent year uh two percent year losing half a percent year like that and just chip away they could have had that account funded maybe not that week maybe not two weeks maybe in three or four or five weeks but you still have the funded account so allow time to work for you number three small wins on okay small wins are okay right you want to everyone's saying big wins you need to go for big wins big wins big wins small wins are okay let's actually change that sometimes small wins are okay sometimes if you're coming off a losing streak take a small win um, have a peace of mind and then come back with your mental straight don't don't come off a losing streak and have so if by losing streak i mean like four four trades in a row that's losing like you lose one percent one percent one percent one percent so you've lost four percent already don't go in the next trade thinking hey i'm gonna risk two percent because I've, I've lost four in a row now take your one percent and then go home with your one percent put one percent risk on go home with one percent that's totally okay that's fine just because of your mental capital all right you need to preserve your mental capital as well this is a long game we're not here we're not here for hit and miss results we're here for the long run small wins are okay sometimes right and now the next one push push your winners cut your losses And by this I mean if you wanna scale this account very quickly, but it's also very risky. 
if you have one to two risk reward right you have one to two risk reward as soon as your risk reward hits one to one you move your stop to break even you move your stop to break even you enter another position with one percent risk so now all in all you now still have the same trade you still have the same trade let me actually do this so two to one was the initial position after getting hey 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 getting two one to one add one percent risk as a new position and remove initial risk keep same targets So a lot of the time when you're trading two to one or um, risk to rewards at numbers like that, like two to one, one point five to one, you'll see a lot of the time once they reach one reaches that one to one point, it often, very often goes straight to two point one or the two two to one or one point five to one, and you could have made another percent. So. You would essentially still have the one percent risk, but you have two positions on one that will be one to one risk reward and one that will be one to two risk reward. So you have one percent of risk with now three percent of three percent as a target. This does push your win rate like lower, but the one to three ratio is much better than one to two, obviously. So that's like I'm talking about pushing your winners, cutting your losses. And you never, ever, 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 ever add to a losing position. So if your position is a negative, you do not add to it. If you if you're at minus 0.5%, don't add another percent. Let it run into your target or let it, let it run into your one-to-one -one so that you can add another percent there. But never, ever, ever, ever add to your losing positions. And people say, oh, it's easy to say after the position's done. But you'll know in the moment. Because if it says minus, if your equity thing says minus, if it says minus even, even $2, minus $2, do not add to that. Do not add to that. If it says plus two dollars and it fits into your model where you are adding more and reducing the risk, do that. Because that's how you push your winners and that's how you cut your losses. So with every trade, that's why I'm saying trade risk. With every trade risk, like trade idea that you are risking, let's say that's one percent. So if you want to add more position risk, you need to now cut down on the position risk that you had. And you can increase that to then equal to the trade risk. So by that I'm saying reduce the risk of the initial position and then add another position onto it that equals to that the amount of trade risk you have. If that makes sense. It should make sense because I explained it. If not, just comment down below. And then, number th this is the, yo, this one could have made me so much money. Sit on one win. Phase three. Sit on one win. Guys, this would have made me so much money. Sit on one win in phase three. There's oh, numerous, numerous, numerous accounts 
instead of pass phase one of pass phase two i get to phase three now as soon as i get my first payout in phase three i get my deposit back that's how many platforms are set up um funding pips the one i'm with now is not i think it's after your fourth payout but they also have a weekly payout schedule so it's like i can take one trade a week get the payout every week and then get my initial um, deposit back that's the idea but sit on one win on phase three if you if you've hit phase three take your one win there's after that there's no risk on your account you've taken your money back from the prop firm that you put in as a deposit you've taken even if it's a small amount of profit you've taken a bit of profit so you know how it feels and now you can go in with a clear mind knowing that you have nothing on the table you have nothing to lose even if you lose the account you can do it again because you have that capital that they deposited the, the deposit that you gave them you took it back so sit on one win in phase three i'm saying this not to be funny or to say hey do not trade in phase three da, da, da. but do this wait till the payout day and then you start your account as like a new account a fresh account you could say that so those are those are the important factors so having an edge a line time to work for you small wins are okay sometimes it's just to get your mental right get yourself back in um push your winners cut your losses there's really there's a good book um, by tom hogart um best loser wins that's a really good book to look at if you on phase three certain one winner get your positive back and then get back in the game we're here to make money. We're not here to be right. And then this is actually, I don't know who said it. I think it was Charlie Munger. Let me actually search. Um, Charlie Munger quote. Is a quote that stuck with me. quote on losing money i think it's this one boom 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 oh warren buffett Successful investing is not just about making profitable investments, but also avoiding losses wherever possible. And that makes so much sense because if if you lose 2% on an account, right? I'm not trying to scare you now with this being said. Try to cut. This is why cutting your losses is important. If you lose 2% on the account, getting back to break even is 2%, right? Getting back to break even is 2%. Getting to your profit target is now to, um, 10%. Right? If you lose 5%, 5%, loss. If you lose 5%, <laughs> getting to your target is now 5, no, sorry, 13%. 13% if you lost 5%. So if you took 5 losing days in a row, you'd now need 13%. Or if you just didn't manage the risk properly and you took a 5% or let's say a 3% loss or 4% loss the first day and then the second day you took 1% loss. You're now down 5%. You really need to strap down, get yourself back in shape and then start on managing your risk properly and trading properly because to get up from five percent up to the target which phase one is eight percent that gap is now massive it's a whole 13 percent gap
Whereas if maybe you lost 2%, it's going to say minus 2%, that gap is only 10%. Now, the 3% doesn't look like much. The 3% doesn't look like much. But if 8% is the target, right? 8% is the target. That is almost half of 8%. It's like, that's almost 50% of more profit that you have to make. Just to get to this target tick. Which is ridiculous. It's going to be so much more difficult. If you lose 8%, if let's say you lost 8%, That would mean you need to make 16% to hit the target. 16%, 100% more. That difference is 100% just because you lost 8%. So you need to now double the amount of profit you make. So small wins are okay sometimes. If you're eating like big losing streaks, take a small win, it's fine. Get yourself back, compose yourself. And then push into your winners, cut your losses. So with that being said, that's everything that I look at as important. Um, Albert's answer your question. Legendary hit shotter four five six four. Um, risk management. What's the important factors to follow? Those are the important factors. Risk management. These are the three that I look at. Um, it's all up to your risk tolerance. I would say, for me, personally, any trade idea, I don't have more than 1% on. And my account risk is 1.5%. So on the funded accounts that I'm trading, none of them I risk more than 1.5%. With 1% on each idea, and then position is 1% as well. So you'll see in some of the videos I had 1% um, of open risk and then I just added another half a percent. I think it was the Dow Jones video. Yeah, Dow Jones video, phase one video. We are made three, three and a half percent. That was because I, I could add half a percent due to my account risk. So my trade risk, I had my full 1% on the one position of GU, if I'm thinking correctly. Oh, sorry, two positions of GU. So there's half a percent, half percent, half percent, and then another half percent on Dow Jones. I can't remember correctly if, if that's the exact percentages, but that's what I'm going off of now. Off the top of my head. If you found this video insightful, um, leave a like, comment, if anything confuses you could clear it up even more and do a much better job at presenting this. It's just me <laughs> doing it, yeah? Off the top of my dome. Okay, cheers. Bye.